Are we... Are we live? I think we're live. Are we? I don't know. I'm. Were we ever really checking. living? Is this the real life or is it just fantasy? That's just another question. <laughs> the rest is silence. Hamlet. Yeah. Shakespeare. Twitch. Jesus Christ. Why is it? Okay, yes. No, we are live. And the sound. Yes, we are. We silence. Are. Yeah, I like the sound of silence. That's a good song. There's a lot of really good songs out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, um, so, uh, before we get into, uh, it, uh, there is one thing I do want to say. Um, you as you all know what day it is, 20 years ago on this day, uh, something happened that shook America and we have not known peace since uh, and it changed the course of our American history and we've never forgotten so I just want to say 20 years ago let us never forget that Nickelback released uh, Silver Side Up you know I was about to and say I was famous to song <laughs> And one of their two songs that are good, uh, This Is How You Remind Me. Yeah. Yeah. That was on Silver Side Up. Neat. I was, I was going to, I was very, I was very much waiting for you to say A Knight's Tale or like Lord of the Rings or something. Oh, no, no. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's get into it. This stream is going to be me fighting the boss. Cool. The boss. And anything that comes after. Shit. I forgot you know. that's how it starts. Shit. I'm run, motherfucker, run. He, he just opens with combat. Yeah, hold you on. just walk in. I, Boom, I, final, hold, hold, on, on. hold on, I need to restart because Jesus Christ. Uh, frames. Uh, there's so Our much. Lord gave us frames that I, we made. I think it's because I launched going. the game before I launched OBS. I think okay. that, that might be what's been causing the uh, thing so uh it does us. that yeah yeah let's try this again an oh bullshit moment yes so are we still alive or is he yeah, OBS? We, we are alive i have to restart the game because uh i've been uh troubleshooting and i think that it's because i started the game before obs okay got a bunch of lag I haven't touched Fair OBS enough. in so long. I know sometimes you have to go do the extensive even closing OBS too. Back Makes then. <laughs> but I try and use Streamlabs OBS because they have a bit more to their feature than user. Uh, I get the appropriate availability because they also got a new job. Nice. You got a new job? Yeah. Um, kind of the same hours of what I have now. But it's closer to home, a little better pay, and uh, I think also just a better work environment since it also allowed me to learn more on the programming side of machining, which is what I wanted to do in order to get into some form of engineering. Actually, it might be the Discord stream that's causing it. Hold on. Oh. Uh, let me uh, change. Also your quality as needed. Yeah, I'm going to change the quality to. Quality. I'm going to change the quality to. So... Yeah. Oh, I can do machining okay, and programming and more in-depth stuff to learn. Look out! Yeah, he he opens with it with a roll attack. Yeah. Do a barrel roll. You know he's got a great design. I'm just serious. Oh, absolutely. Like, the, the, the cycloptic look is is classic in general. It's like a cycloptic keyhole. Yeah. But also, this that um, iridescent armor reminds me of Destiny 2's armors shaders. Destiny 2 has like really good design work, which is a shame because the games themselves aren't great. You know what yeah. else has really good design work uh, based on what's been seen? Um, the new God of War looks like it's going to have some great design work. Yeah. Uh, I so, love so, Destiny 2 though. Design. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. So, so oh. apparently, and I, this surprised me, a lot of people don't like his new his look, and I'm like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> Oh god, I am doing uh, terribly this round. No shit. I mean, like, what's the big deal? It's not like he's part of actual mythology or something. I mean, it's not like it, Thor was 
It's not like oh, his wait. appetite was one of his defining features in uh, mythology. It's not it, like it, he's got the body shape to fight bears. It's not it, it's, like it's, super well-defined muscle, muscly bodybuilders are extremely dehydrated and only look like that for that one day. Oh. And most it, of it's all... It's not like actual myth uh, portrays him as... Uh, a strong man, and that's the kind of body actual strong men have. Yeah. And it's not like Marvel created him. Yeah. And it, well, also, Marvel had Fat Thor. And that yeah. was Thor at his most powerful. Because yeah. he had uh, Stormbreaker and Mjolnir. Fair enough. Well, yeah. he wasn't like fully fit, but the idea of his ability was. Yep. Yeah. Because he had the capability of still being the strongest Avenger. And they still give him, like, this really good voice actor. He speaks very softly. Which is... Well, let me look up his voice actor. Because I, I, I had his voice act. I looked his voice actor up recently. What's the name? Who is he? Who is he? Uh, yeah, Ryan Hurst. Damn, that sounds I, familiar. Know, I know the name, but I forgot roles. Uh... IMDB! We always go on yes, IMDB. Yes, it's our IMDB hour already. Oh, th this is fast. All right. I know a Hearst for some family member. He what? was... I Not quite in time. He's in The Walking Dead, the TV series. Watch that. Oh. Uh, he, he was the brothers? In... Uh, he was Beta. I watched Walking Dead and kind of got bored, like, after the third episode, because the gimmick, the concept kind of stopped being interesting, like, really fast. He was in Rango. Oh, shit. I love Rango. That's got Giant Depp. Yeah. He's <laughs> using Sons of Anarchy. Never watched that. Go. What? How did that uh, go, he, Oh, shit. He was, in right CSI, in he was in CSI what? Miami. Oh, he was in House. Nice. Uh, which As house guest character or... did he play? Uh, Sam McGinley, a uh, minor role. Yeah. Uh, which Wait, episode? I think I know who that is. I think he was that kind of kind, but kind of doc kind of kind doctor got angry at House often. Uh, uh no, dude, that's Brown different. Hair. No. Oh. Uh, let me look it up. It Sam, Sam it McGinley, Sam. House. Uh, he's. The brother of a patient who died in the episode oh. Mistake. Oh, so it's a single Which one's the mistake? Character. Uh, the mistake. Is that the one with the dog? Uh, that was episode 8 of season 2. Uh, second season episode of House, which first aired in September 29. The episode is told in flashbacks as Stacy prepares House and Chase for a disciplinary case where a simple mistake by Chase eventually results in the death of the patient. When the hospital is sued over the incident, Stacey has to dig for the truth both to save the hospital and Chase's career. Oh, fuck. I, I, I'm actually doing really good. Nope! You jinxed it. Yeah, I know. There's nothing I could do. I was cornered. Wilson and House are discussing House's fight with Stacey when she walks in to tell them about the hearing. He signs the paperwork and sends her to see Chase. Preparing ch the review, Chase's memory of the patient's treatment. The patient presented... Da -da -da -da. Oh, is that the one where it was uh, a staph infection and they just pumped the patient full of... Uh... Oh, no, that wouldn't... I actually know. Because that was a pilot... Uh... And also later in the seasons. Okay, right, hold on. I'm gonna switch. Oh yeah, yeah. So so basically, he uh, he failed to ask an important question about uh, diarrhea, and he basically rotted her liver out from the inside, killing her. Oof. Because he point? gave her the he, he. I don't even recall. I think the most interesting episodes are the ones where the patient doesn't make it. Ah. House turns out to be right, the donated liver had a cancerous hepatoma, which spread quickly in the sister because of her immune system being suppressed. Yeah, uh... Yeah, so she ends up getting... she ends up having cancer, which, uh, Chase mistakes for something else. 
and she gets and he and Chase gets sued for malpractice because he uh, gave her medicine that ended up speeding it up. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, I think my favorite one uh, episode in which a patient dies is the uh, one where it's a girl who. Oh, I was getting two things confused. It's the homeless. Uh, no, not the homeless. The con artist that ended up having the staph infection. Uh, she, uh, the episode, did the, don't crash, did it crash? Oh no, it stopped. Nope, it's not crashing. It's still going. Leg, look out, look out, look out, oh my god, holy oh, shit. <laughs> I guess. Move, nice. move, move. Uh, on the topic of episodes where the patient dies, uh, one of the first episodes I saw of House, and the one that takes me the most, is the episode where this guy is going through deadly radiation poisoning? Oh, and nobody figures it out. The radiation. His father was a garbage collector and picked up a radiation radioactive uh, pellet and uh, made it into a keychain because he didn't know what it was for a son. Yes, yeah, it's that one, and that that's like a really rough episode because one because it, it's. It's an act of like love that gets the uh, the son killed. I and have... in <laughs> was, or the uh, she's a con art part of the con. Uh, mm. She's supposed to basically pick the right card a couple times, get people to raise the bet on her. In, uh, one card, but because she uh, make decisions. Uh, mm. Come on, pause. What the? Okay, and so, uh, let yeah, it. Yeah, uh, So what happens was they pump her full of drugs because, and, and it was a step. When she got uh, put in her bra, mm. uh, uh, it, it was all the drugs that killed her. All gave her, killed her. Mm. Shit. Yeah, that, that's mm. always rough. Drugs. Yeah, the uh, the using it with with the uh, the Air Force uh, was the Air Force ended up getting a. Uh, surgery or getting a uh, uh, on her uterus caused some of uterine cells to get bloodstream and skins causing it to mm. uh, bleed uh, so that that's what that one was that was confusing. That one's painful as hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't imagine it's pleasant. Uh, they ended up having to to basically look at her lungs. They ended up having to give her a uh, boob job to have an excuse to... Uh, 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 to have an excuse to... Uh, a boob reduction, I believe. Um, to give her an excuse to open up her chest because she was... Like training to be an astronaut, and if uh, any of this ended up coming to light, that would immediately ruin her chances of that. Because mm. mm. you need to be like super healthy and stuff to be an astronaut. Because uh, no doctors in space. Yep. No, most of them probably do have a doctor of some kind. Well, yeah, but usually in like space engineering. Yeah, true. Like, if you're on a plane, uh, and you're vomiting up blood, and someone says, is there a doctor, would you be fine with the person being like, I'm a doctor, I'm a space engineer? Uh. Well, they probably have to undergo, like, basic medical training. Well, yeah, like, first aid, I, I'd imagine. Well, and so yeah. a little bit, yeah, yeah, a little bit more. Than first aid, honestly. So, so your buddy is choking in zero gravity. How do you get the me how that do you get the uh, chicken out of his throat? Why is there chicken in space? They use the paste. 
Blanc Blagok. I oh no. It was it was delivery. No, it's yes. DiGiorno. <laughs> yes, yes, they, 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 they called up Jeff Bezos. I didn't and, 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 and I have a dream. But they call up Jeff Bezos, and he uh, and yeah. he goes into ch into space himself, on low his orbit, to, on on his massive, on his on massive, his massive uh, red rocket. Something. What? I say you think? Not hard quad. Yeah, I mean, making a shape of a dick obviously is compensating. <laughs> he's compensating for something. And that just proves to the world that any kind of large is a scam because even the that sounds kind of dickish you you've heard that uh god it, it's this it's this tiktok video about a guy and he, he's he made a song up about jeff bezos about finding like a genie in a bottle uh bo burnham <sighs> no i don't think that was it was it ceo <laughs> entrepreneur bo no no definitely not Okay. Jump. Jump. Uh, it, it's it's a song about uh, Jeff Bezos, and he finds a genie in a bottle, and he gets like a billion free wishes. So he wishes for a bunch of stuff for himself, and other people start to notice, and they're like praising him for like his luck, and he immediately believes they're like, they're against him. They're they're his enemies. They they're holding him back. So he kills the genie in the bottle to make sure nobody else oh, gets a wish. Killing the golden goose. Well, actually, at that point, he has everything. Yeah. So, so, so he kills the genie to ensure nobody else can have the same uh, fortune he had. Uh. Okay. Which is the uh, which is leads into the tagline. Was here for Jeff, who has everything, every single thing except a heart. That's a good turn. You walked into that one. Yeah, I know. That's why I said shit. Don't do that. I'm doing good this round. I, I just love the weight of his jumps. That is so cool. Oh, yeah. They. Oh, shit. How did I not? Pull. Pull. Laser. Pull. Pull. It's not the lasers that I'm worried about. The lasers. Oh, shit. It's not you're worried about. <laughs> it's, the, it's the it's the it's the bulls. The bulls get in the way of dodging the laser. Oh shit! Actual bullshit. Run, mother trucker, run! I do really like. Uh, oh, damn it! I was expecting him to open up the doors before smacking. It, 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 it's the fact that he's got like these really long arms and these kind of stubby legs that make him really stand out visually. Oh, yeah, he's very lanky. Yeah. Reminds me of the, um... You, you played Dark Souls too, right? Uh, a long time ago. He reminds me of the giants from Dark Souls Yes! I, I like the DLC where you go back in time to kill the king, which was the No, that was, the, that was that was the main game. Was it the main? I thought... No, that was the DLC. No, the DLC was uh, unrelated to the giant stuff. Hmm. The, the, the DLC has you fight a uh, dragon, and you get to go back in time, and you get to fight a uh, samurai, and you get to uh, travel to a frozen abyss where you. Uh... And the painting world, right? Or was that in the main game? It's so that... hard to tell what's. It, it's so hard to remember what's in the main game and what's DLC. The painting world is uh, main game in Dark Souls One, but it's DLC in Dark Souls Three. Okay, so it's Dark Souls 3 that has the painting DLC. Yes. How did I not get hit there? He landed right on top of me. You uh, ducked through the shockwave, I guess. Yeah, but he still he landed on. right on me. Mm -hmm. I don't think he himself hurts you. Physical contact with him doesn't damage you. So if you dodge through yeah, like, the shockwave, I guess he, that worked. If he lands on me, I get hurt. Well, he, he what hurts you is the shockwave from his landing. He like, himself does not physically hurt you by contact. So you dodge through the shockwave, and he himself does not hurt you because he can't hurt you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I'm starting to be able to tell when he's going to... Do a thing. Recognizing the patterns. Yeah. Which is good. 
So on the topic of um, rewinding time, Shit. Uh, Thor. <laughs> so so the new God of War trailer came out recently, uh, like just y yesterday. I haven't seen it yet. I I've only seen the uh, picture of Thor, but okay. I love Thor's design. Uh, so so there's two big reveals, three technically. There's a. Uh, there's Atreus himself, who's now a teen. Yeah. Uh, there's there's Atreus's girlfriend in the making. The the girl he has sex with to uh, to make a giant snake and also a um, horse giant dog. Oh, okay. Does he the horse turn somebody into, else? Do, does he turn into the horse? Uh, I don't know. I haven't played the game yet. Okay, that's fair. Though I do definitely think it would be weird in the God of War continuity if Loki had sex with a horse and then gave it to Odin as a gift. <laughs> yeah, because... Uh, oh, shit. Because yeah. Odin is more of a de facto bad guy in this interpretation. I mean, obviously, he's a king of gods, so, uh, and kings of gods are all assholes. Gods in general are all assholes. That's why the main plot of all the games is killing them all. True. Except in Hades. Uh, kind of. Hey, Hades! Hades! Hades. Is kind of. <laughs> okay, so, so so Hades did deserve his coming for him, but he also was the most sympathetic of the bunch, which is still true. By the way, he's whispering Fancy Brown. Uh, I'd say Hephaestus was pretty sympathetic. Yeah. Uh, but Hephaestus, wanted... Hephaestus is the one who, uh, who went after Kratos. Uh... To, to free Pandora, but then... Uh, yeah, only, I, I only guess. fought Kratos because he knew that Pandora had to be sacrificed to open to yeah. get the thing. And oh, he's gonna he's gonna do so, the Vegeta. he's gonna Vegeta. I just know it. Nope. So, so interesting anything. enough, uh, a God of War comic, uh, Fallen Gods, came out within the last year, Shit. and that was pretty interesting. Shit. It's about, um, it's about Kratos in Egypt. <laughs> hmm. I'm doing good. Yes, keep doing that. That's easy to dodge. So that was pretty cool because what was going on was Kratos had just done the fall of uh, Greece and he's decided he doesn't want any more of Athena's BS. So he, so he gets That's on fair. a boat and leaves to the farthest corner of the earth where he chucks the uh, Blades of Chaos into the water and just decide... Is he, is he not going to Vegeta? I, I think it's further. Like, Oh, the, we're getting what? close. I think this is it. Oh, no. Apparently he's not vegeta -ing. Yeah. Okay. I can work with so, this. So, so what ends up happening is Kratos just uh, runs off into the desert and people are like, Kratos, save us! We're in danger! And he's like, no, I don't want to help any of you. I don't want to do anything. I want to just go into the desert and die. <laughs> but he doesn't die. Instead, he uh, he, go he takes a nap. And when he wakes oh. up, oh. Oh. Uh, the Come Blades on. of Chaos are back. <sighs> Which is always cool. Hold on. Oh! oh. Okay, my heart is pounding. I've never. Oh come on, Careful. screen lag. Don't. I'm at one health, and he looks really low. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, I thought that was it. I thought that was gonna be like the the, yes. the one bad move. No. No. Yes! 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 Oh, yes! He did Woo! a Vegeta! How far are we in? We this is like 30 minutes into the stream. I don't know. Wow. Check the stream. Oh, stream's over. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, Jesser. Okay. Please. What? <laughs> Forgive me.
Oh, that locking, that locking noise. Ooh. How many souls this bitch got? I oh. don't want to die. 500? It oh, this is you, Scraps. It's uh, Stonehead. Honestead. Today we mourn the passing of a being who shaped the very fabric of our world. The end of a lineage. The last lord of doors. His name was Timothy. For some, they were a mysterious leader. Very mysterious. To others, a dark cloud looming over the world. Driven by a desire to be greater than their creator. I love how his helmet shapes into like a devil horns. Yeah. They will be remembered for their part in the advancement of door technology. They invented the revolving door. Mm. Their ability to maintain order in a dying world. Oh, you can see everything. Oh, that's cool. That I didn't cool. notice that. Nice. Well, we mm. No, I think we did once. Yes, during the boss fight. Like and the their unwavering determination to evade death. No matter the cost. 50 cents. That's how much. Tree Freddy. He owes my Tree Freddy. <laughs> you, just, you just hand death 350 and he leaves you alone for a week. <laughs> this is this is why the Republican Party is full of old crones. Did it? Tree Freddy. No, it's just loading. You can see okay. the... Uh... Yeah, okay. <sighs> the Elder One. I don't oh, know. so we're gonna uh, use. Uh, oh, right, because the Lord of Doors were used make making a fragment used with. They were made using a fragment of death. So now, with the Lord of Doors soul, we can open the death door once more. I think. Their pursuit may have been unwise, but the will to live is deeply ingrained. Who is to say that any of us would have done given the same choices as this Lord? Bow your heads in remembrance. Pay your last respects. Their time in this world is over. <laughs> oh, oh what, a, what a cocky, I cocky little fellow. death. Just yeets the, eats the uh, soul at the door. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, I that, 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 that's, a, that's a filter. That absolutely is, but it's so good. Yes, when done right. Yeah. It helps because the world is just so stylized with those nice, harsh, harsh, mm. harsh edges. Death's door. Nice. Now, there's Sunshine. a reason why I don't think this is going to be the end of the stream, because there's still one more person we have to kill. Hmm. Who? Steadhone. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, we got, we, got to, we got to bully him now. Well, it's going to take forever. A acid game nerve. by Acid Nerve. David God. Finn and Mark Foster. Kudos to you Foster. two. Y'all are amazing. Game design, level design, production, music, and sound was by David Finn. And Mark Foster did the animation, story writing, programming, and game design. Wow, these are like uh, omnidisciplinary, yeah. Oh, no, oh. it didn't do everything. The power of indie. UE art and logo design was by Fritz Olsen. A concept art by Sarah Morrison and John Abbott. I can't even... Oh, I'm months. sorry, man. Graham, uh, Graham, Graham, Graham Goring. Justin Chan, Fritz Olsen, and Jenny Brewer. Can, can, we, can we just say that Graham Goring is such a good name? That sounds like the name of like an orc boss in D&D. Oh, I am Graham, Graham Goring. Oh, Devolver Digital, thank goodness. Yeah. This is probably the uh, additional team. Yeah. Have you met Jonathan my friend Alan J. Carnage? R. Rosal is... Oh, this is the... We're, we're doing this on the same day our new Trinity. Devolver Digital video is coming out. Hmm. Because these, they, 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 they uh, ported over... Um, Metal that, Wolf? That from Soft Game. They, they ported over Metal Wolf? Yeah, they, they did the Metal Wolf oh. port, yeah. Huh, neat. Oh, they, they published it. They had a different team uh, port it. But it, they, they published it in America. Konstantin Gorohokovsky. I hope I didn't Eddie pronounce Eddie Keatonhausen. Colby Tortoric. Thomas Schollenberg. 
Alima Besahari. Anita Wong. And Misty? Oh my god, that sounds so badass. Anita Wong. Anita Wong. <laughs> Doug Jones. Wow. Doug Jones? Doug Jones. Shit, why Doug does that John. sound so familiar? D Doug oh, Jones. That's I'm Doug sorry. Jones, yeah. Oh. yeah, not Doug Jones. Doug Jones is like a voice actor, right? Jokery, 80. Who the hell is that? D D Doug Jones is the uh, the guy who did uh, Abe Sapien. Oh. Hmm. Yes, yes. Doug jo that's who it is. The contortionist. Yes. Yeah. So, Etheria do. No. I don't know. Powered by Ben Lavery. Joseph Kelly. Special created Unity. with Unity. Unity is a great engine. I'm serious. Unity is. It is. It's a very it's easy very to use open. engine. It's it's very open source. It has I've a lot Unity. of help tools. The Thank game I playing. wanted to make, I was trying to make on Unity, and then I just <laughs> didn't have the time to pursue it anymore. Yeah. I want to. Was... I I I need to make a. Oh. Oh, he's just dragging him. <laughs> Well, yeah, you gotta get the body to the grave somehow. He he just grabs him by like the arm and he's oh, dragging shit. him. He's... Did you see that? What? The Lord of Doors left behind a key. Oh Damn. shoot! I need to go back to the. How do I get there? There should be. What are you waiting for? Uh, go over there quickly, quickly, quickly! Come on, go, go, go! Uh, go, yeah. go, go! Before we forget, ADHD and all that. You're yes. under time limits. Yes, I will. Never until you forget. I am. I'm gonna get it. Get it before you forget. Time is invisible. It's only need relative. To, uh... Oh man. Is this the key to the DLC? Life is a highway. I think it's just a memento. Oh my god, all the things are glowing now. May may maybe it's a weapon. You you can get to keep maybe shank it's people. <laughs> maybe, maybe you get to shank people with a tiny key. Maybe, this... maybe that's the big reveal. No, that's not the right way. Prologue time. Prologue time. Come on, post game content. Oh, sorry, How epilogue. I... Ah, here we go. There See? we go. Epilog. Totally out of bounds. Pick up. You found a rusty you... bell tower key. The Lord of Doors. <gasps> oh! I know where this goes! Uh, Thank the room that had those windows. Uh, is it. Yes. Uh, Maybe. shoot. You remember? Because there's that. The, the, next to. St uh, next to Steadhone. Hmm. Yes! It... Did it crash? You seem to be standing in place. Oh, there we go. There we go. It was just no bandicoots today. What? Crash bandicoot. Oh, no right, bandicoot right. today. I was planning on uh I don't like Crash 4. I just not I've ha I've been having more fun playing uh Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney. Yeah, Crash Crash Four is a lot harder than the previous games, which I've definitely noticed has turned a lot more people off of it. The correct one. Mm. Well, is it like difficult in the way that's respectable of old games? Mm. Uh, so, so the original Crash Bandicoot games were difficult in a uh, fair. in a way that it, no, no, not not in a fair way. Uh, it had its spikes, uh, but they, they were consistently easy to get through the levels. And it was going for the additional challenges that was hard. Uh, Crash 4 is difficult in a sort of... Uh, that's bullshit kind of way. Uh, developed by people who are psychopaths. Mm. Because the levels are a lot longer... Which means even speed runs can take like several minutes longer. There's like 400 boxes oh. in each level. Oh, it's Jesus. Uh, scraps. I lost a dear friend long ago and buried him under the moon's light. Ever since that day, I have felt a piece of myself lost. I wonder if I could ever feel whole again. Oh, that's rough, buddy. Come on, moon. Is that not? Oh god, I really thought. Okay, rusty key. Of... The rusty bell tower. You want me to look it up? Uh, bell tower. Uh, there's key. A strange novelty rusty key made uh, centuries ago. By... It must fit into. Ooh. Yes, look up where the. Because this is post game content. Find the hole. Yeah. All yeah. right. 
Also, I think my food's here, so I'll have to take a short break. But oh, I'll wait, never back. mind. It goes right here. Oh. Or I can hold on a moment. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was somewhere in this area. When I ring this, I bet I'll be able to fight Honestead. Oh. Oh. Nope. That took a turn. Oh. You get to change it from day to night. Ah. Uh, there's got to be more to that. That's got to change some things. Let's talk to... Ho All oh. right. Yes, that does. Are you good? Nope, you're not good. Oh, that's it's not good. It's got ghosts. I think they don't die. Uh, well, not with that attitude. I think you... Shit! I'm telling you. Okay, yeah, they might not You can't die. kill a ghost. Oh, that's the ghost of a lock... Uh, of a Lord of Doors. Where's Honestead? Additional difficulty. That's what that does? Oh, shit! Uh... Honestead. Hitting the bell tower switches the world Scrape, from day to scraps. night. Now you can collect secret objects called ancient tablets of knowledge. Ooh. Scraps, this is you. Evening, Reaper. I don't really sleep anymore. I lie here each night wondering how it would feel to no longer be living. If we were dead, would we even know? Alright, so I think I'll probably just wander around the game see what uh see what is new uh, with this. So, I don't think you can plant pots at night. Do they... No, there's pots. I mean, but you can't plant them. Oh, they or won't can bloom? You? Yeah. That's fine. I planted most of the pots anyway. Fair enough. Oh, shit! Oh, wait. No, I killed that one. Uh... Let's see... Let's see if that affects, like, other areas. Spoopy. Oh, oh god, hello. this is ominous. Let's go that to the... That looks like an open door. Alright. So... Just uh, listen to that healing wind. Yes. I love it. It's so creepy. Uh, Camp of the Free Crows. This is... That... There's one door that's not glowing. Hmm. Ah, so, so it turns out, uh, if you go around, you'll find uh, different stuff has changed in some of the areas you've been to. And you can do, like, additional challenges. Nice. Uh, I think I'll do a haste. So I'm going to get my food. I'll be back in a short bit. All right. Oh, that one's sleeping! Yeah. That's cute. What do you have to say? Paul Blart, the head of security. Nah, this simple droids of TV. It's nothing good for you when you watch it all the time. But you gotta allow yourself a reward every now and then. What do you call uh, it? Yeah. Shan oh, Shanley the Handler. Oh, yeah. you already talked to him, didn't we? Well, not since we beat the game. Uh, Vagabond. Quite live for an adventure, eh? I couldn't see myself too excited at the prospects of the future. Yeah, tonight has an extra fresh quality to it, don't you think? Yes, the the future. Is that Badger? Now the, now the Lord of no, no. Darwin. You no longer now have the... access. Oh. You don't have access to the soul vault. We sh I can still use excess soul energy to enhance your combat abilities. Oh wait, whoops! I was trying to talk to the other one. I guess I have to talk to him this way. Agatha the Tapis. Just sleeping. Yeah, that's so cute. Uh, let's go into that one door that was not glowing. Now that the Lord of Doors is dead, we must establish new laws, new doctrine. We should consult my friend T J Jim. No! Best Jim the no, who is Betty? <laughs> oh, that that's the uh, that's the Yeti we uh, you killed. Oh, right. Why is it gl why is, uh, I just saw something glowing back here. What was that glowing? Sure, maybe. Try hitting the wall. The wall? Yeah, try, try giving the wall a good smack. Uh, I guess it was, uh, just, just nothing. What is that? No, nothing. Mm, that, that's the... Hmm. 
I just thought I had uh, seen. Wait, so then why is this one? Oh, is it because it's a boss layer? Do boss layers not go? Uh, let me check. Or is it because uh, there's still stuff to do in that area? Because if, if it's that the doors stop glowing once you've completed everything in that area, that would make sense. Uh, oh, okay. So you want to know the secret? Uh, is it the complete? Is it a mark completion for that particular area? No, it's uh, it's what you're supposed to do in that area. Uh, does it have to be in Betty? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. It's got view of moonlight. Do I have to dig up um, uh, Steadhone's friend? Uh, go back to Betty's lair. I am. I did see something right there in the center. Uh, There's an ice... Uh, okay. Do Go to Betty's to... lair. Just outside the cave entrance, there's a series of oh, ice crystals to the right. Oh, yeah. So we'll leave. Okay, yeah. No, no. It, it's still in there. Just leave the, the cave. Yeah, I know. I am. The cave's entrance was right next to the... Oh, so... Oh, I see. Yep, so give these a smack. Yes. Climb up here. Uh, and I can figure it out from here. Here's yep. the moon. Ah, yeah. Oh, that's what all those doors that we thought were DLC. Ooh, neat. What is this? This was Stedhone's friend's thing. Mysterious locket. Some kind of soul, some kind of, uh, soul energy swirls within. Uh, here lies Monty. He was a good boy and my dearest friend. His time in this world is over. May he rest in peace. Yes, this w I was right. It did have to do with, uh, Stedhone's friend that he mentioned he buried. Let me go bring oh, this neat. locket to Stedhone. Nice. Let let's see what he has to say. Come on, Sted. He has something good to say. I want that juicy lore. Yes. This is why I love Dark Souls. Because, uh... All the lore is tied to items. Funny enough, I always was amused by the fact that uh, in Dark Souls um, 1, there's just a useless item that does nothing. But it tempts you to get it anyway because it just sounds cool. Which item? The mysterious locket. Oh. That's probably what this is based off of. Because, mm. you know, it's called the mysterious locket. Yeah. <sighs> Come on, steady. So yeah, if all those uh if all those uh areas that we thought were DLC are in fact uh places for the moon now that the moon is shining. Oh yeah. We can probably open them. This is quite oh, elaborate for a uh oh. I thought maybe that might do something. We still need to figure out what those platforms are for. Yeah, we I'm still holding out for teleportation. Headstone's gone. Or Steadhone. Uh, no, that door's oh, open. Shit. Yeah, the door is open. I knew that he had to do with opening this door somehow. Oh. He's a lot bigger. Hello again, Reaper. For some reason, I stirred from my usual resting place last place tonight. I could feel something calling out to me. Oh? You found my old locket? Oh! He's a soulless vessel. He put his soul in the locket. That's why he can't die. Like the like like the 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 ceramic witch, she put her soul in the pot on her head. Oh yes, yes. I haven't seen that since since the day I buried my only friend. The day the ground shook and the sky turned black. I feel he's crying. So strange. Oh, he's got his soul back. He's mortal. And he's, and he's crying. crying. Oh. 
I'm gonna hate this. The Grave Digger. Dig your grave, Bonus Grave boss. Digger. Oh shit. Uh, actually, well, oh, gonna... he's just going right at you with that. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna. Shit. Oh shit. I, I get the feeling that. Oh, I get the feeling those can hit me. What are you gonna do? Dust me up? Yes. Dude. To death. Oh. Jesus. Some absolute nutter made this boss fight. And oh that is so yeah, cool. no. I do not doubt that this is gonna be the most difficult boss fight. I, I don't want to get greedy. It's tempting. He moves just slow enough that you think you can. Oh, yes. That is it exactly. It's that it's I, the same I, thing with I Dark Souls. Even, you... Yes, I don't even know if the those things will hurt me, the dust clouds that he kicks up, but I'm going to assume that they do. I'm pretty sure one hundred percent they do. They would oh, not shit. be using them so regularly if they didn't deal damage. Yeah, and he they wouldn't he wouldn't have the attack where like he wouldn't have this attack if they did not do damage. It'd be hilarious if it didn't do damage and instead just knocks you back like two feet. Well, I'm not put taking that risk. Yeah, don't. It's the fact that he's so slow. Yeah, you're right. It tempts you into... Into going a bit further, you yeah. know. I, I got like a half a second more to get another oh, swing shit. before he hits. Oh, 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 oh. Shit. Minions. He's a mook boss. They die in one hit, though. Oh, that's not bad. Well, it's probably because I, like, am... Oh, fuck. Oh, you you could you should have powered up. I, I did upgrade before this. I used all my souls to upgrade. Oh, yeah. I uh, got haste to get my... Uh... Dodge roll faster. Yeah. And it's working. You need all the roll to your dodge. Okay. So he still pushes you away? Uh, no, no, I uh, dodged, or I, I basically was about to run into the uh, the sand, the, the, I was about to run into the dust cloud, but mm -hmm. I managed to catch myself before. Remember, you still got projectile attacks when you're around. I am not risking it. <laughs> I, I'm, and, I'm not... Fair, fair enough. I'm doing really good considering this is the first time I've uh, fought this boss. Yeah, he doesn't seem to deal damage. He just pushes you back. Well, no, he has done damage. I'm just dodging. No, no, no. I, I mean when he does, like, the red thing. Well, no. The, the red thing is him summoning these guys. Yeah, but I mean, like, it seems like he pushes you back when he does it. I haven't noticed that. No, no. I go to the edge because that's where they spawn. Oh, okay. No, no, he got knocked right back. No, I didn't get knocked back. I dodged into the edge so that I could... Oh, oh okay. Because it just it just looks like he's pushing you back, and that's so no, weird. No, I'm specifically going to the edge. Okay, that was completely unnecessary and reckless. Okay, fair enough. Uh... Shit! No, he's not showing any cracks yet. Yes, he is. Yes, now that I'm looking at... No, what? Is he? Oh, no. Okay, he pushes me out of the way of that inner circle. It's not a yes, shovel. That, that's yeah. what I've been saying the entire time. No, I thought you meant like he was pushing me to the wall. I didn't really oh. know before because I was actually dodging into the wall uh, so that mm. I could uh, kill his uh, mooks as they spawn. Oh, shit. Now he's spawning them willy-nilly. No! Nope. You fool! He's he's finally learned the ultimate method of. I really want to know the lore reason behind why the he has like minion summoning now. These are people. He's he's a grave digger. It's probably. Oh Jesus Christ! Now it's actually hard because the minions are stopping me from dodging. 
the min the minions hitboxes when they do that keep me from dodging essentially. Mm. By the Fill way, that hole, Jester, hole filler. this is my first time fighting this boss. My first attempt. You're doing good. Yeah, diving in between so I can let that Damn it. cool. <laughs> oh, oh man. fuck. I could I felt like I could have done it on my first try. That would have been actually cool. That that's the important thing about boss fights, I feel. If you feel like you can beat them on the, your first try, you that that's a good feeling. Like, oh I yeah, I know. could if if I if I had known a little more, I'd been a little faster, I hadn't screwed up at the start, I would have taken my first try. And, yeah. and that encourages you to always go back and give it another shot. If you feel like you, you were inevitably going to lose no matter what you did. Yeah, that's what fight. I love about this bo uh, these bosses in this game. Is that none of the deaths feel cheap. Uh, except for whenever, like... Uh, except for whenever, like, the frame rate drops. But that's probably a hardware issue, not a software issue. You, you also, know what bosses his didn't thing, do that? His thing is really, really easy to dodge. Like, it, it, it feels, this is probably, this feels like one of the smoothest... Yeah, it's progressive difficulty, though. Oh, yeah, no. This you you want to know what bosses... This is a post-game boss. <laughs> yeah. You know what bosses didn't, uh, what game didn't do the whole first fight, feels like you can win it sort of ordeal? What? Paper Mario Sticker Star. <laughs> Never played. Yeah. Awful game. So, so the, the gimmick is that, uh... You don't meet the bosses until you fight them, but in order to beat the bosses, you need a specific item oh, out of like a hundred possible items you can pick. So, so you get to the boss fight, and the boss fight arena is a baseball diamond, but nothing else in the level suggests you need the baseball bat. But somewhere in this area, you might run into a baseball bat, but there's also like 5 million fans, 5 million uh, gopher holes, 5 million other rando items you can run into. Just millions of little items just de dotted all throughout this area. So you don't know which one it could be. And they take up so much space that you don't want to have them all in your inventory. You have a very limited inventory. Which is incredibly infuriating. So you're like, ah, oh, maybe I won't use the baseball bat. It doesn't seem as useful as the uh, hedge clippers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you get to the f boss fight. It's a baseball diamond, and the only way to injure the boss is with the baseball bat. Otherwise, you're having to deal 800 oh, uh, damage okay, worth so of yeah, chip. those the uh, the dust does hurt me. That's the first time I've gotten hit by the dust. The, the worst boss fight is the boss fight with Bowser. What do you need there? Everything. everything See, everything? the boss fight with Bowser is um, incredibly frustrating because the way he fights is he moves from area to area in this uh, in this massive dungeon area. He, he has this massive dungeon. And the way to beat him is you have to go into to each different room and each different room has a different elemental effect and a different stage to his pattern. And it's kind of cool, but after a while you start to realize, wait a minute, I didn't bring an ice power up with me to the fire for the fire room. I'm screwed. See, at because times you like that, it should be like an optional kind of thing, and you can, it, like, if I had a thing like that, I'd have it be optional. You can choose which rooms to go to. And it's like an exaggerated the... Legend of Zelda. Uh, I mean, but it's one single boss fight. You fuck up at any t time and you gotta start over again. And the only way to do damage to him is with the hammer attack. Guys, guess what I did first time jump. through? Jump. I, I figured to myself, wait a minute, what if I, ha I, I can have an, I have a ton of space. What if I have like uh, a bunch of hammer attacks? But also I should probably pick up a few of those uh, jump attacks just in case. To get a nice even spread of jump and hammer. He only takes damage from hammer. So at the so at the final fight, I'm I'm there and I'm fighting him and I run out of hammer. So I have to suicide by jumping on him. That's it really was, the required item. Nope. Required it's item prep is very stupid. Okay, so yeah, the difficulty is definitely the fact that he's a mook boss. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, the Paper Mario Sticker Star is awful, 
because it requires precognition against every single boss. That does or just use the walkthrough. Yeah, that does sound yeah. awful. At least with like Legend of like Zelda, Legend Zelda, you know, you have a good have idea a good of idea how to how fight the boss, the boss because, because like it like, uses it the dungeon, uses item. dungeon item. Yeah. You use the dungeon item. You you've used it just to get there. Why not keep using it? And th but in Paper Mario Sticker Star, it's like, yeah, you're surrounded by a big pile of trash. How do you destroy it? Well, uh, may maybe you need the uh, vacuum, but you could also use guess. this goat you found. Wait, is it which one? Is it not the vacuum? It, it, it so it's either the vacuum or the goat. It's you can pick up multiple items. And they all, and it, several of them do the same thing. But the problem with the game is, it doesn't tell you which. You you don't find these items in the area. Oh god, oh, that's, god awful. that's awful. And in the game world oh, uh, is oh, huge. Scraps, I can hear and my mic your... Oh, give me a second. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the uh, I. I think that guess who's back. Ew. Uh, I back think again. that if you need a specific item to fight a boss, the item should be gotten in the level you fight the boss. Shit. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, the game world is split up into Shit. levels. So, so it's not like you'll find the boss item in the same level as the boss. No, you'll find it anywhere within like the, the ten chapters that compose the boss's world. Oh, that's terrible. And a lot of these worlds are incredibly obnoxious to navigate because they're just not f fun. They're, they're filled with enemies. Yeah, they're, they're filled with enemies. Uh, Mario he has disposable attacks. Oh, right. You have to like pick up the attacks. Yes, disposable is it possible attack. To, is it possible, like, completely uh, soft lock by using every single attack you have? And, uh, like, I'm guessing you can buy attacks, so I guess also losing your money. So, like, if you run out of attacks in the middle of a fight, you can, you can buy more attacks at the game store, but you can't... So there, there's attacks littered throughout the areas, so you're never going to be without an attack. But the thing <laughs> is, if you run out of attacks in the middle of a hmm. boss fight, you're fucked. It, has a, it has a pity system. Where every once in a while, it might drop a single jump. Which is useless against things that are immune to jumps, like Bowser. Yes. And yeah, most of the bosses. Again. Guess who's back? Back again. After dinner, though. <laughs> Jester's back. After Tell a friend. Yeah, I had to wait for the cool. I had to wait for the food to cool. So. Okay. I'll be back. Oh, one of my coworkers is on vacation this week, which is amazing because now I don't have to work with them. <laughs> oh, is it the uh, one that you've been babysitting essentially? Uh, kind of, yeah. Uh. So, so long story short, she's got a very abrasive personality. She yells at everybody. Nobody really likes her. And now that more people are working with her directly, I was talking to like one of the, the managers and he was like, oh my God, she's such a pain to work with. And I'm like, oh yeah, tell me about it. And he, and he went on this list of things that she, she's, she's done that have been like really bad and obnoxious and just sort of hard to work with. And I'm like, ah, oh, you mean all the things Cindy warned you she was? <laughs> so, so I, I've told this story, right? Yeah. That, uh, that she, she took over the uh, depart the online sales department after the uh, previous uh, person in charge had to go on like uh, extended no idea what leave. She's doing. Well, she's... <sighs> She's she's lazy. She she does the whole makes it look like she's working thing. Oh, I hate that. The one where so, like she only gets maybe twenty minutes of uh, work done in an eight-hour day. Yeah. So so you you show up and only like maybe one of the uh, sales is done, 
and she she's waiting for you to get in so that she can load off the rest of it onto you. And then next time you see her, she's not doing any of the of the sales herself. What she's doing is she's spending time going over your sales and making corrections. <laughs> Ugh. And it's like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm doing repicks. And I'm like, cool. But why are you doing repicks when we still have work orders? It, it, it's nice and all, but you're you're wasting my time, and yours. And the company. More importantly, the companies. If you you, yeah. you you gotta prove that she's wasting company time, because that's the only way. Like. Yeah, I, I probably could. It wouldn't be hard. Uh. And I've talked to, Cin to Cindy, who is back at the job. She's been effectively banned from that department because she causes so many fights with Sue. And I'm like, you guys should have just fired Sue. <laughs> or sent Sue back to the, to the previous store she was at. I think I might switch to this for... Because it okay. deals a lot of damage. It's slow, but so... Oh, oh, and it does that zap damage. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because... Uh, the uh, mooks, they die in one single hit with the dagger, so they might die in a, uh, they might die to the zap. Oh, that could be useful. Well, I'll find out next time. I'm so used to the, uh, the daggers. The, yeah, the stabby stab uh, that I wasn't sure of. Uh, the shanky shank. Well, the, the slammy slam. You're so used to the shanky shank and the savvy stab that you're just not used to the. Oh, uh, the sword the is the slashy slam. slash. Mm. What's the umbrella? The thwacky thwack. Yeah. You want me to try to fight him with the umbrella? No. Okay, good, because I am not. I, am I mean, not. I could make the challenge, but I'm not a psychopath, and I just know it wouldn't be worth the time. Oh, jeez. Okay. I basically have to relearn all pat. Oh. I basically have to relearn all patterns. Alright, because you have less dodge range now. Do I? Oh, I do. And also, the reaction time. Or, the yeah. time. Yeah, you, you're always been like, I can get in two slashes, and now it's like, you can get in one. Not in, maybe. Okay, yeah, no. Hammer, not doing it. At all. Well, maybe when he summons the mix, you can swap to it. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, if the books get overwhelming, I'll definitely. Fair enough. There's still one more weapon I'm missing. I probably get it from killing Steadhone. Maybe. Uh, I hope so. Because if not, then that'll be the last thing we get. The music's good. Oh, absolutely. The music is always good. And so is the environment. Yeah. It's a good environment design. Like, it's just nice oh, and dramatic, gonna... and it's got, like, oh. lighting. Oh, shit. So, so, you want a theory on what's going to happen in the God of War? Uh, I think that the gods are going to kidnap uh, Atreus. Uh, here, here's my theory. Uh, you're gonna run into Freya several times throughout the game, where they're gonna, where it's gonna be revealed she's gonna that be she's the been new trying. Athena. No, no, no. Here, here, here's my take. Okay, What's I'm, going on I'm with uh, with Freya is that she shows up constantly throughout the the journey as a uh, as like a as like a mini boss. Because what's going on is she's been trying to kill Kratos for the past some odd years. It's been like what, maybe three years in in universe. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, so, so it's been like three years in universe. So she just shows up every other week in in during that time period trying to kill Kratos, and she's just more of an annoyance at this point. <laughs> yeah, hold on. She, she just shows uh, up and Kratos is mind... like, ah oh, man, not this again. Speaking of, do you mind? 
<laughs> Can you kill that? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe if once I kill Steadhone, I'll get like a weapon that can kill them. Because I am still missing a weapon. Mm, fair enough. Yeah, the uh... Oh, I, I learned that um... In the new God of War game, uh, Kratos has a sleigh now. Is he going to become Santa Claus? Maybe. <laughs> okay, so so that would not be uncommon for, for the uh, God of War series. Oh, I know. He's got the beard. In, in the creator of the first game, uh, whose name escapes me right now, when he was asked what he would have done if he continued the series, he was like, He'll kill oh, yeah. like Jesus. No, no, uh, that, that, uh, so, so the original creator was like, nah, here, here's my plan. He's gonna eventually, uh, turn the, uh, the Blades of Chaos into scythes, and he's gonna become, like, the god of death, and it's gonna be cool. Okay, so and, when and he's then... summoning, okay, so it's better to, uh, just wail on him when he's summoning the mooks. Uh, I will see how many I can... Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are, the hammer's good for the mooks. So, and, and Corey Balrog, uh, when he was asked what he would have done with the series, uh, after, when he was like, oh yeah, I would have had it be uh, Kratos teams up with uh, different versions of himself in uh, different pantheons, and they would have gone on to become the three wise men. Yes, that's what it was. Oh, shit. Uh, yes. Okay, I think I got a new strategy. Uh, hammer on the books, because... The electric, the, the zappy zap does kill them. Uh, yep, and it's got the, a wetter, wetter arc. And also, the uh, when he summons the mooks, I can just wail on him. Yep. Now, if I can dodge, yes. Oh, okay, but if I can, because. I, now that I know that I can absolutely crowd control with the hammer, uh, when he summons the mooks, I can, when he goes all red, I can just wail on him with the daggers, switch to hammer, uh, deal with the mooks, uh, and continue. Cool. Because the reason why I wasn't doing that before was because I was trying to get all the mooks out of the way because uh, daggers is not good for crowd control. It makes sense. It's good for DPS. Yes. I'm going to go get myself some pretzels. All right, you have fun. Oh fuck! I got hit right off the bat. I hope that doesn't. Oh god! Yes, it threw off my groove. Oh god! It threw off my groove. <laughs> uh. Jesus Christ. I wonder if the other boss rooms have secrets like Locket had. I'll go check. I saw that. Yeah. Dude just did a spin in the air and brought his hammer down like just the whack. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm not gonna get this run. Okay, so I learned that to wail on him when he's summoning the books, I have to be behind him. That's the only way to uh, wail on him. I, is I gotta be behind him uh, when he's summoning the mooks. 
But that's the cool thing about this uh, game is that it's uh, learning the strategies and fine-tuning them. Like, the bosses are difficult, but not unfairly so. And the more you fight, the more you're able to learn. It's not like Metal Wolf Chaos, where you have to cheese the final boss. It is yeah, that, that sucked. Good. That was a real letdown. That really hurt my ego. Because it's impossible to... Uh, I'd say that probably... I, I would rather an impossible boss have to be cheesed in order to win, rather than fighting as intended. Uh, because Fair enough. At least if it's an unfair boss that can instant kill you. Uh, but that well, final phase, zero, though. Multiple times. Wild. That final phase, though. Yes, it was really easy. <laughs> to the point where the strategy guide doesn't even say how to... It doesn't even have a strategy. Just point your guns and shoot. Yeah. I do love that it's a Christmas game, though. Oh, yeah. Because it takes place during Christmas? <laughs> yeah. God, that that is an absurd game. Like, legitimately a great game, but so absurd. And difficult. Very difficult. Not for everyone. Get God, it. um... You didn't. You didn't see it, but there's there's a Las Vegas fight against uh, Richard Hawk, and what makes that fight frustrating is that in the final phase, once his HP is low enough, he does the uh, full weapon unload thing that you do. Oh God! Makes that's... himself uh, invincible for like ten seconds. That's oh the invincibility, man. That sucks because it doesn't make you invincible. No, it does. It does. Okay, yeah. then that's fine. Yeah, so, so even, he's invincible and I'm invincible. But the, what's annoying is that he's invincible for like the five seconds he's firing. And if you don't do the exact same thing as him, he stuns lock. He stun locks you. <coughs> Oof. To death. He just stuns lock you. Ah, uh, god. And, and, and he rips through your entire health bar in one go. Yeah. I'm surprised it. You know, I think Metal Wolf Chaos deserves an anime. It, it probably would make a great anime, yeah. I feel like he's getting faster. Maybe my reflexes are just getting slower. I think a Metal Wolf Chaos anime would be well received in the United States. Probably. There was a animated Bayonetta movie. Yes, how, did you see it? I have not. That's still something we we mentioned the animated Bayonetta movie, and you're like, "There's an a, there's a Bayonetta anime movie." Like, yeah, <laughs> you should see it, and then you never did. I need to get around to it. Yeah, I I just need to get a copy of it. I can send you a a, a link to. It might be on Netflix actually. Oh, it probably is. I, I'll check Netflix. Oh God damn it. Um. I'm thinking, because, uh... There's actually two movies. Really? I believe so. Uh, like, one's, like, the first half of the game, the other's the second half of the game. I can believe that. I think. Or it might be, like, a two-part miniseries. I don't know. Yeah. It's been, like, ages since I've seen it. But I do remember, it starts in a chapel instead of a graveyard. Fair enough. God. Chapels the are probably easier to CGI. The opening scene of Bayonetta really sets the tone. Oh, absolutely! It is amazing. It's a bit long. Well, luckily you can skip it. Yeah, I mean, like my issue is, um, there's this tendency in platinum games to have like these long, gorgeous cutscenes. You just get to watch the character beat up enemies for a while. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. And yeah, it's beautiful. And yeah, it's stunning. And I want to do that. Please let me do that. I think Bayonetta's... It's not too long for an opening cutscene. Yeah, 
but what does it really establish? It doesn't uh, establish much. I mean, it establishes that Bayonetta is a certified badass. It establishes that the enemies are going to be angels. It establishes that she can only attack them when her weapons are in uh, the limbo. Uh, uh. True. And it establishes that humans cannot see creatures in limbo. It also uh, establishes that Rodin is a weapon supplier. God, Rodin is one of the best uh, optional bosses. Yes. He is he, very... I've never difficult. fought him. He is difficult. I never beat him. He's I never fought him. He's difficult to unlock, difficult to, uh, to fight. He's difficult... <laughs> He's not difficult to unlock. You just no. got to spend a ton of time. Well, yeah, you have to grind for the uh, enough coins. Stuff. Yeah. And that's mm. probably its own issue, just the fact that you just got to grind for coins for I mean, like five sense. years. Because he's a merchant. Yeah, I guess. I do like that in the second game, it showed us how he actually turns the demons into weapons. Uh. Because he made the uh, uh, thorn whip out of the uh, flower that was uh, keeping Jean captured. Ah, uh, yes, her. Yeah, because the LPs, the golden LPs, they just lure out the powerful demons, and then he has to kill them and then trap them into uh, into weapons. Yep, now he does. Yep, and I, I like that the second game showed how that was done. I forget how it was done, but I do know it's done, so... Well, when the, uh, when the demon is dying, he basically holds up a facsimile of the weapon. Uh, in the second game's case, the uh, hilt of the whip. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they just sort of flow into it? Yeah, they uh, get sucked into it. Like you know what, that's fair. I guess that makes sense. Fly me to the moon. Let me play among the stars. I've never seen Neon Genesis, but apparently that song is relevant. It, it plays at the end. Okay. Uh, I don't like Neon Genesis Evangelion. I've never seen it. I was planning on watching it with DG, but uh, I never got the chance. My main issue with it is that it's artsy. It's not. It's not that it's artsy. Our artsiness is fine. They're, they're, it's it. it's the fact that everybody's miserable. <laughs> Damn it. So the the creator uh, we had a major case of depression, uh, almost suicidal, while writing the story. So it took a massive swerve from what it was originally meant to be, which is a bit more campy and just sort of serious, to very serious, very depressing, everybody dies, nothing matters. <laughs> if. Uh, it's almost like, um, have you ever heard of Devil Man? Uh, I've heard of Devil Man Crybaby. Yes, so, so Devil Man Crybaby. I've never watched it. I don't know anything about it. I've never actually even seen any screenshots from it, but I am aware of its existence. Okay, so so what happened with that, and I'm just going to give you a rough overview, is the uh, the creator of that was a student of the creator of Cyborg 7. Cyborg, Cyborg 009, I think. Which was... So he was the, and the creator of that was the student of um, the father of modern anime. Ah, yes. In manga. Ah. The one who really likes Scrooge McDuck. Yes, whose name I have escapes me at the moment. He's the one that made Astro Boy. Yes, his name escapes me. But um, okay. I absolutely do love Astro Boy. All right, I've determined that whenever I get hit, I need to back the fuck up immediately and recalibrate because yeah. he's his back his backswing well not just that but also he throws off my groove yeah so the 
they have a very similar art style. So the Devilman Crybaby has Devilman has a very similar art style to Cyborg 009, which is a very similar art style to Astro Boy. Which, you would not know oh, that in the it. anime adaptions I because I always seem they... to run into those. I always seem to run into the dust clouds. Uh, which was the anime where it was like the same episode just from different angles? Like ev each episode was just the same exact thing. It's just from anime I don't from know. different angles. I don't know. I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't. Can you look it up? Anime. I know. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it just Google anime where every episode is the same but from different angle. That'll probably bring it up. God Endless damn. eight. Yes. The. Kyun Kun Dinwa. Part of a series of the melancholy of Haruhi Suzume. Yeah, so this is the same eight episodes over and over again until finally at the end they break the loop and it's over. Um, so, so it was so poorly received that the creator actually had to make an apology note. You know what my favorite artsy anime is? Paranoia Agent. Never heard of it. What? It's the okay. It's the one where there's uh, the little slugger. Uh, you know the uh, the serial killer who's a child on roller skates with a golden baseball bat. Uh, never heard of it. Oh my god. Oh, it's by Satoshi Kon. Okay. No wonder I haven't heard of it. Oh, that was... Did you see that? That was so cool. I killed all of them with the chain attack. Oh, uh, neat. I was, the looking attack. I, was looking, I was looking up Satoshi Kon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Paranoia Age got one of my favorite... Uh, come on. Let me wail on you. Damn it. Okay. Uh... There we go, just like that. Uh, Paranoia I, I need, I, I need I, to watch uh, Tokyo Godfathers again. No, don't know what that is. It's uh, it's, an, it's a movie by Satoshi Kon. The creator of uh, Paranoid Aiden. Ah. So everything like about that, it's in his other works. Like, um... Tokyo Godfathers, which is about three hobos who adopt a baby. Oh, I think I've actually heard of that. Oh shit, I'm doing good. And I still Apparent. have a couple health. According to some people, come it's on, the come on. best. I'm gonna get um... greedy. Yes, I'm gonna get greedy. <sighs> nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. Careful. Yeah, yeah no, I need it. Oh shit! Oh, I, I saw that. Oh, that was that was painful to watch. <sighs> Damn it! Oh, he was so close. I was trying to do the. I dodged to the left when I should have dodged to the right. I, I saw the uh, frame stutter. Was that what it was? Yeah, you got a stutter. So. Um... Oh, I, I had a very slight stutter. No, it was just like a notable pause. Like there was this brief second where like everything just sort of froze, and then like it came back like a second later, and like uh, you were being thrown across the room. Ah, <laughs> oh, I was really close though. This you were is... insanely close. He was yeah. glowing like a like a I... effing lamp. Yeah, I I I shouldn't have said that I'm gonna get uh, that I was gonna get greedy. That... This is, this yeah, it's is being, being greedy. Being greedy didn't hurt you in the end. What hurt you is that well, you got no, ended up. What, what being being greedy did because I uh, ended up focusing on him when I should have focused on the mooks. Fair enough. Uh, this is my Sisyphean task. Sisyphean? Yeah. I, I've talked about that animation that I had to watch in a uh, animation school where it's this guy pushing a rock up a hill. Yes. It won an award, actually. Let me look that up. Yeah, it's, uh... 
this is my Sisyphean task because it is uh, an impossible task, which I can get really close. What hit me? Nothing even hit me there. He didn't even attack. Jankovic Marcel Sisyphus, 1974. A 1974 Hungarian animated short film directed by Marcel Jankovic. He's yeah. based on the myth of Sisyphus and shows a man who can. Okay. The film was produced by Hungro Films and is two minutes long. The film was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film at the 48th Academy Awards. It was used in a car commercial, which was shown at the Super Bowl. Interesting. You know, I don't think I'd want my car to be compared to of Sisyphus. You know, the thing uh, that famously always rolls backwards once it gets <laughs> to the top of the hill. I'm just imagining it now. Our car is so good that you will be literally straining with the effort to move it when it eventually gives out and runs out of gas. You know what the worst car... So, I'm of the opinion that things shouldn't have internet connections if they don't need internet connections. I hate smart, like, appliances. And the worst thing ever is a smart car. You heard about those the smart cars that would uh, uh, end up, like... Uh, turning off if they got into an area with no signal, right? Oh god, that sounds awful. Oh, it absolutely does. Because, like, every half hour they would check to make sure it's connected to the internet to... Uh... Honestly, I don't know. What were they even trying to do? Like, is it like... Try to pir like, because you can't really pirate a car. You wouldn't download a car. I think it was related to a, um, I, th I think I recall this story. It was about a, um, it's about car rentals. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the rental cars were connected to the internet so that, um, when they were driving, if they di couldn't reconnect to the server, then they were the car would stop. Yeah. They didn't want people stealing. Yeah. Oh, God damn it, I ran right into that. <sighs> You ran into that multiple times. I know. I don't know. So no matter how hard I try to dodge, which is weird, because it goes in the four, it goes in the eight uh, primary. He had and it coming. Oh god. He had it coming. I love Chicago. He only had himself to blame. If you'd have been there, if you'd have heard it, you've seen Chicago. You, right? you would have done the. Oh, I love Chicago. I do too. I've only seen it like a like twice, but it's so good. Oh yeah, it's got Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, it's got that banger of a song. Which that's? Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> it, it's it's got the it's got a. Uh, uh, tango. It, yeah, the sidewalk tango. It's, yeah. It's got both reach for the gun. It's got uh, all that jazz. One of my one of my favorite. It's got razzle bits. dazzle. One of my favorite bits from that movie is when um, is when she's talking to her husband, and her husband's uh, telling the cops what oh, happened. Oh yes, uh, and uh, she and she's singing about how kind and loyal funny, he is. It, yeah, funny honey. Yeah, that's the song. Yeah, how loyal he is, how great he is. And then he realizes and, that she was cheating, and, and immediately turns. sells her out. <laughs> yeah. Was she cheating? I don't recall. Yeah, she yeah, she was yeah. Uh, cheating on him with Fred Casely. Ah. Oh. Uh, because Fred Casely, who sold them their furniture and gave them half off, uh, said that he knew some guys in the uh, jazz club industry and that he could get her a, a, a spot as a singer at a jazz mm. club if uh, if. Uh, she slept with him, and uh, so she did for quite f for like two months, uh, starting on the night that um, uh, 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 shit, uh, Velma Kelly uh, killed her, uh, or allegedly killed her husband and her do uh, and her sister. 
What amazing timing. Because uh, that was the... Uh, that was the night. That was the first night that Fred took her to the jazz club and made the offer. Was when she uh, was when Vilma went on stage and got arrested on stage mm. during all that jazz. I don't recall that. Um, I, as I said, I haven't seen the movie in a while. I really do need to watch it again. Yeah, no, it's it's the opening act. Okay. Uh, because uh, it starts with. Vilma, the overture is uh, Vilma Kelly going to uh, going into the jazz club and washing the blood off her hands, as you remember from. Ah uh, uh, yes. Yeah, it wasn't until I washed the blood off my hands I even knew they were dead. Ah uh, goodness, there was a um. I I read somewhere oh, this, this isn't first. Good. I'm re re remember, remember the French lady who uh, who didn't speak a lick of English. Hungarian. So nobody knew, uh, Hungarian, yes. Yes. And uh, people were. And I, I yeah, looked at her what it, know what she said. Yeah. And, uh, she went with a. Hung she was at a hotel with a Hungarian actor. Some people came, uh, and uh, killed him brutally, cut off his head, and she couldn't get a lawyer who, uh, or anyone who could understand her. So there was nobody to really. She was the only one left there at the scene, and she couldn't tell anyone that what happened because no one could understand her. Mm. Yeah, uh, I. So she got blamed for the uh, violent murder. Oh, that that's rough. Yeah, that's why she was the first uh, woman hung to get the death penalty or hanged. I'm sorry, she was the first woman hanged. Oh, I don't recall that at all. I yeah, really the am Hungarian mad at Disappearing that. Act. Or H Hungarian Vanishing Act is what this scene was called. Oh God, that, that, that's I a terrible. I love <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a, uh, it was a really intense scene because that was the scene that showed Roxy that if she doesn't win the case, she will die. She will mm. be executed. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I love. You know, movie is really good that I that I've seen a few more times than I like to admit. Uh, the Prestige. I like The Prestige. Okay, that's why Christopher Nolan's <laughs> really good films. Yeah, um, I I, I really liked it, and one of yeah. Christian one of the reasons great I did, <laughs> Prestige. One of the reasons that I don't like uh, admitting how much I watched it is because. Mostly because I spent like a lot of time trying to figure out like how the me mechanizations of the uh, things Teleport. worked. Yeah, I admit it. I was like, right, come on, there's got to be clone, uh, cloning. The cloning machine. Yeah, I was, I was like, how does that work? What 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 are they doing with that? And, and I'm like, I kept watching it like to see like if I could figure out like what it was, like if he was like really himself or not. And after a while, I just gave up because I realized uh, it doesn't matter. I'm overthinking it. I'm becoming those people who watched Inception five million times. <laughs> okay, but the thing about Inception is you can objectively say that he is not in his dream in, in the end because the top isn't his totem. It was his wife's totem. His totem is his wedding ring. He doesn't wear it in the real world. He does wear it in the dreams. He wasn't... Er, yeah, he does wear the wedding ring in the dreams. He does not wear it in the real world. He was not wearing it in the end. So the ending is happening in the real world. Yeah, but um, I, I thought Another it was Another great Christopher because, because, Nolan yeah, yeah, film. Yeah, that is a good one. Um, I, I do recall like a lot of conversations that happening about the totem. And a lot of people were like really upset, like, oh, here it is, it's rotation speed, and a lot of people were doing like absurd amounts of math. Yeah, but the, and, and okay, the Christopher thing Nolan is, was like, the, the just, top just, is the misdirection. Yeah. Like, the top is not, like, they, they've seen the prestige, they know the three acts of a magic act. It's, <laughs> it, it's the, uh, oh shit, can you remind me? I can't look it up. But I remember. It, um, yeah, yeah, let me look it up. Three acts, yes, prestige. The uh, prestige is a three-act film, which follows the magic acts. It has the setup, the uh, uh, 
All right, okay. So, so here's how it works. The pledge. The magician yeah. shows you something ordinary. He's basically saying, look at this object. This is where we are. The second act is called the turn. He shows you the... He takes the ordinary thing and makes it do something extraordinary. The, um... That's why it, the every magician has the pledge. Yeah. Yeah, which is, which is neat. Yeah, the the prestige itself follows those acts. The pledge is setting up their rivalry, which is yeah. something ordinary. The turn is when it gets, or the uh, oh, god damn it. The the turn is when it gets violent. Yeah. And yeah. the pledge is when, and the prestige is when uh, you discover that uh, Hugh Jackman is actually going off his rocker. <laughs> Shit! I rolled right into that. That was my fault. <sighs> I like how the last two episodes of this game have been me fighting bosses. It's fine. Yeah. It's a really good game. And honestly, the levels, I will say, they did kind of get a bit long, at least in, for streaming. But it had a very simple structure. Like, it had a very consistent structure. Each level uh, was three sections. Uh, and then the boss. Okay, if I can get to the area where he spawns a shit ton of mooks without getting hurt. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I need to recalibrate my groove. Alright, I think I'm good. Thing is, it's hard to change direction in the middle of the... in the middle of the combo. Damn it, I hate when he does that. <laughs> He does. He does a swing that gets you off your. Uh... Well, it, it's when he does a swing like more than the amount of times he. Oh, God damn it. More oh, than the yeah. amount of times he normally does it. Come on, wail on him. <laughs> I got greedy. <laughs> I just love that that one dude just comes in out of left field. Yeah, he's and just, like, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Boom. <laughs> he just clotheslines you. Oh, yeah. God, this is a really simple boss on paper. <laughs> like, there doesn't seem to be any special gimmicks to him. He's just insanely difficult, which I love. This is a really good post-content boss. Or post game boss. Yeah, sometimes he does it twice and sometimes he does it three times. And it's the third yeah. swing that gets me. Well, technically, that, that, that's annoying. Well, eh. Did I dodge? Wow. I managed to dodge it. Well, it's not necessarily that he, sometimes he does it twice, sometimes he does it three times, sometimes he does it twice, and then sometimes he does it twice with an additional uh, set. Oh god, he threw off my groove. Okay. God, I, I still remember that uh, <laughs> the children's hospital where they painted the walls red. <laughs> oh, yeah, the color theory. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it. So, for those who don't know, it was a children's hospital where they uh, painted a bunch of red lines, uh, like like a trail. Yeah, uh, like throughout along the wall of various shades of red. Uh, it was on the floors. It was on the floors. And I think it was on the walls, and they just had like uh it was yeah. like it looked like something was dragged, which yeah, I think it, was sort of the idea. Like, oh, we're. And, we're and some, and it was posted like, "Hey, hospital, you probably should have chosen a different color." And someone was like, "Uh, color theory, um, red." 
red can mean many things like hope and compassion and love and the red cross <laughs> yeah it's red is commonly used in medical field and it was like yeah well that doesn't change the fact that with that particular pattern it looks like somebody dragged a bloody corpse through it <laughs> and, yeah and then they still tried to argue about color theory uh c color theory is wild um, color theory is let, 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 me, let me tell you this right now. Color, color theory, theory is, is color theory is so easy to manipulate and break. Yeah, color theory is bullshit. Basically, any color can mean anything, and you honestly don't need much to justify it. One of the things that's neat about color theory is that green is lot, the color a, <laughs> of evil because lead was. That's lead. not color theory. You know what I mean? Uh, shit. No, what I was saying is, like, color... Shit, what is it called when, like, you assign certain, like, emotions and stuff and uh, aspects to colors, then, if it's not color theory? Uh, isn't that, color... that representation and metaphor? Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's more that color theory is what, what looks most pleasant to the eye. Now. Uh, I remember in, like, the arts, I was told that um, I had to read uh, Fiddler on the Roof once absolutely boring play never got into it um though probably that's just because i just never got into like the uh the issues of adult life <laughs> and i was like come on let, let, let's get to something more interesting <laughs> uh anyway uh so feather on the roof uh there was like an emphasis that the main character has to wear white because it's a color of innocence and his wife has to wear like black because she's gonna die no, no, because she because she's supposed to be the villainous one. So something about that. I don't recall anything about it. I just remember the the, the fact that they had like very specific color palettes for, the, for each character. And it reached a point where I was like, yeah, you could put the wife in white and make her like some angel seductress if you wanted to term if you wanted to like phrase it in that way. Like, oh, she's the alien. She's the angel seductress. She she's tempting him. And uh, he could be wearing black because black represents death, or re black represents sadness, Basically, or something. Basically, any or other. color can mean anything with the loosest justification. You know, how people are like, "Oh, green is good, red means bad." I could argue green is evil because lead paint uh, was a uh, green color, and radiation glows green, uh, and red. The plague. Uh, yeah. The. the uh, red is good because it means love and, and uh, health. Like, and it means Splatoon. It's all about perception. Yeah, it's all about perception. It's how it's used. Yeah. Uh, red is a kind color because Zuko is actually a nice boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or Jake, Jake Long the... is, uh, or Jake Long, the the dragon character from um, yeah. the American Dragon. American Dragon. Yeah. Uh, By the way, I learned today that there was a death battle with him and Danny Phantom. I do <laughs> not care for death battle. <laughs> death battle... Death battle's stupid, uh, in my opinion. Like, my, my main issue with death battle is... It's incredibly biased. It is always incredibly biased. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, I, I know one of the guys who, uh, who helped did research for them. And that dude has like such a major DC Heroes boner. That he would never accept anybody beating a DC hero, not even a, not even like in a case where it's like so ob objectively like obvious. Elastic Man it. versus Thor. Or, or like uh, I or, believe sorry, the only Plastic one. Elastic Man he... versus Thor. I know, I don't I don't recall that one. No, I was saying. Oh, yeah. in, in a hypothetical. Okay, fair enough. Like, like every single time, like a DC hero came up, the DC hero usually won one, and I'm like, yeah, it's kind of obvious why, <laughs> because their researcher is a dude who's obsessed with DC superheroes, <laughs> and 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 I I I, I like I, I know the guy who does like the hard work. He he definitely pulls in the hours. He he, he does his research properly, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But then it's like you get these matchups that are like so obviously one-sided, like Astro Boy versus Mega Man. Who's gonna guess who's gonna win? Mega, Mega Man. Man. He can steal. No, Astro Boy. What? Astro Boy is absurdly powerful. 
Okay, who would win in a fight between Robot Boy and uh, Astro Boy? Uh, who's Robot Boy? Uh, he's yeah, from it was a, a short-lived animated series. Yeah, like a Saturday oh. cartoon. The what? It was a short-lived animated, uh, like Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, let me look it up. Oh. Is, is it robot? Is that the one? With the, yeah, the, the blue. One? Uh, yeah. Uh, British French animated show. Never seen this, but I'm gonna say it right now. Probably Astro Boy. What? Do you want? Do you want to know why? These yeah, Astro Boy moved the moon I'm once. So close. Uh. Astro Boy has an absurd amount of weapons. Like he has lasers up his butt. Can Astro Boy kill humans? Can he uh, uh, get through past uh, the wall? Yes, robotics? he can. <laughs> okay. He, so can if, Mega but Man. He, he, he's, way, he's too nice a person. That that's the issue. <laughs> Hot take, but you know how all the Mega Man uh, enemies, they were built by, or the, yeah, they were built by Dr. Wily and then repurposed by... Uh, Do Dr. Light, you mean, and repurposed by Dr. Wily. Uh, yeah, sorry. They were uh, uh, built by Dr. Light and uh, repurposed by Dr. Wily. Yeah. Not reprogrammed. Uh, their programming did not change. He just appealed to them, like talk to them uh so that means uh dr light was the one that uh programmed them to be able to break the laws of robotics which is confirmed when astro or not astro god damn it uh when mega man <laughs> when rock is uh ready to kill dr wily and Wiley's is like, you can't kill me. Is like, I am more than a ro. Well, he says, I am more than a robot. Because he's the longest fucking text scroll ever. Yeah. But my point <laughs> is, Doctor Light's the one that made the robots capable of uh, hurting humans. What what was, be the what, was the, what, was, what was that comic where they had a? Uh... Where they had a Mega Man sprite, it's like one of those old ass oh, sprite. Oh, I know exactly the the one where it was like uh, Mr. T was a judge at the Mario Brothers. Their name was like, and they did the Mario Mario joke, but then it persisted throughout. Like, it, he ended up asking everyone, like, "Oh, is your name the same thing? Like, uh, is your name Sonic Sonic? No, it's Sonic Hedgehog. Mill name the like." Yeah. Is that uh, the one you're thinking of? I don't know. Oh, God damn it, I rolled right into that. I'm not going to get this time. I, I, I don't think I'm going to be getting it this time. At least this thing's really good for crowd control. God dang it, what was it? Oh, God damn. I thought I was still in my dodge. <sighs> the comic I'm thinking of is from, like, 2008. Oh, man. Bob and George. That was it. Oh, yeah. I have no idea what... That does not yeah, Bobby Bob and George is like early two thousands. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so this so this dude was making a comic uh, about um. Oh yeah, it ended in two thousand seven. Yeah, you definitely yeah. Not, it's not what you're thinking about. Not that's not what I was thinking of, man. Zester, please tell me you've you've read Bob and George. <laughs> I know the name. I just can't remember what it looks like. Uh. Okay. Fair enough. God. Um, you know what? Long, long story short, it was a comic where the the person who made it didn't know how to draw, so instead he uh, started using Mega Man sprites to pass the time. And one one of the things about it is he goes through like uh, all the games at one point, and in like one of them, I believe it was like Mega Man five or something with like centaur man the, the, the big twist is that mega man was the one who went insane and was just murdering everybody <laughs> and, and dr Riley was trying to stop him 
You know what my favorite, uh, oh shit. I don't think it was a, I think it actually was a skit from uh, Sanity Not Included, but it was Mega Man being like, why do, uh, why do spikes kill us all the time? And then it, it like cuts to Dr. Wily uh, uploading a computer virus to all spikes in the, all, all, in the world <laughs> to instantly <laughs> kill all robots upon hitting. <laughs> that that's wild. <laughs> you could say it's Wily. <laughs> Ugh. That's just cruel. It's cruel and unusual. Both of you punsters. But it's not okay. K rule. <laughs> God damn it. Huh. You know what? Okay, so, so here's something interesting. Um, all the way back to Ryan Hurst on Thor, because I, I just re re realized I had that link open still. Did you know he was an Axe Cop? Who? So Axe Cop is a TV series based off a comic, based off a series of stories written by a two-year-old. Is it just a cop that uses an axe? So, long story short, professional comic artist, um, let me Google this so I don't mess anything up. Uh, okay. So, it's a webcomic by Ethan Nicole, uh, based off the stories told by his brother, Malachi Nicole, who is five. Damn it! So, so, Mal so Malachi so would close. just, would, um would give stories and scripts to his older brother, and he would draw them. Oh, neat. So you've got stuff like a... Um, so it, was, it ended up being very popular. Most of you, it was like really a well-done art style. Um, it, it proudly declares uh, written by a five-year-old. <laughs> I think he's like I think he's like well into his high school years by now. You remember when Robert Rodriguez started the... Uh, uh like started the um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl uh, movie off by dedicating it to his daughter claiming that this was based off a dream she had and like <laughs> uh, you remember that? I don't recall like I love Shark Boy and Lava Girl don't get me wrong it is a terrible movie it's a good movie, but it's just not good. Okay, guys. So, so let, let me read you the first. Let, let me read you the first page of uh, X Cop. <laughs> One day, at the scene of a fire, the cop f found the perfect fireman axe. That was the day he became X Cop. I need a partner now. So X Cop had tryouts and hired a partner. My name is Flute Cop. Sign up here. We have a gang of dinosaurs to kill. So the new team went to the land of volcanoes and fought the gang of dinosaurs with their axe and flute. I will chop your heads off. So they cut. So they got the mother and father. Uh, they cut the mother and father. The mother and father dinosaur heads off. They did, then devised a plan. We should put these heads on a stick and hide bombs in them. But flute cop got dinosaur blood on him. I feel strange. The dinosaur blood caused Flute Cop to unexpectedly transform into a dinosaur soldier. And so they became X Cop and Dinosaur Soldier. <laughs> uh, that, that's the entire plot of the first page. Oh, Jesus Christ. You'll have to send told me that. In, told in seven panels. <laughs> you'll, have to you'll have to send me that because that sounds amazing. Um, the... You know what comic I've been meaning to read? Oh, tell. The comic that's based off 2B2T. Uh, the oldest anarchy Minecraft server in the world. Never heard of this. You never heard of 2B2T? No. Oh my god, I have a, a series you'll need to binge. God damn it. Right off the bat. I'm switching to sword. Uh, but yeah, no, 2B2T is an Anarchy Minecraft server that's got 
a lot of shit going on for it because you know it's the oldest one in, in, to exist. Makes and sense. It was recently found out that uh, the uh, there was some. Uh, it, it was recently, like within the last couple months, discovered that the way that one of the gangs was finding one of the factions was discovering people's bases was actually by exploiting a glitch which is trying to basically uses a uh, anti-lag uh the anti-lag plugin in the uh uh server to oh god damn it i'm getting hit that's painful i know <laughs> I don't want to get hit. Hitting, getting hit is bad. Hitting I hurts. Need to, I need to hit back before I get hit. You need to rebate on the re-hit. Maybe if I hit him harder and faster than he hits Group me, up I will and hit it hard. I switched to the uh, sword because it's better for this part. Okay. Because uh, the dagger's range, I can't. Sometimes it's not consistent. This sounds like you need to alternate. Uh, well, I am. You see, I'm using. Oh god. Okay. Okay, I think dagger for this when he's actually summoning the mooks. Okay. Nope. So I'm until gonna, then. I'm going to use the dagger. <laughs> I, I'm going to use the dagger for the most when he's actually summoning the mooks. I'll switch to the sword for the range and once the mooks are summoned, I'll switch to the hammer for crowd control. If only there was a quick swap. Yeah, unfortunately the quicks uh the uh Quick swap is uh, bound to the magic, not the weapons. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. <sighs> Still, this Can't is have really two overloaded of a set of controls. Huh? Can't have two overloaded a set of a controls. Unless you're playing a fighter game. Yeah, but at that point, why don't you just get like one of those, uh, uh, an actual. Uh, Arcade cabinet controller things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, 2B2T is. Go into the 2B2T and read some of the uh, wiki pages at random. On the 2B2T. 2B2T? Yes, 2B2T. Mine. Sounds like someone has gas. Yeah. God, I'm getting into it. Be right. Uh. He'll be back. He'll be back. Back again. We should play Call of Cthulhu at some point. I'll, I'll, uh, see if Scraps is down. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're streaming. Oh. My brother surprised me with a smoothie. Nice. I can't. I, <laughs> I uh, I need to stop drinking smoothies and milkshakes because something in them caused me to cough. Like whatever powdery stuff there. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Your tube's gotten a bit clogged. You oh, you're using like powdered milkshakes? Ugh. Well, that's the kind that. That's a malt. Uh. I mean that salt. I mean sorry, that sugar can kind of wear at your esophagus though, so it might kind of upset your esophagus. in the phase where it's constantly summoning mooks. So there's a Wikipedia article. On, uh, uh, 2B2T's, uh, 2B2T was actually featured in an art museum when someone posted a, uh, uh, thing. Shit. Nope. Nope. Did I? Let me. Ooh. Shit. That actually Did. was the jittering. The frames dropped because there was so much shit on the screen. So, so what I'm seeing is that I'm looking at a uh, a picture of the map. Um, in late in late 2017, and then like in late 2020, where they already ripped up half the map. 
Oh man. Uh, well that's well that's not even the full map. That's just a, a very small portion. The map goes into like the millions of chunks. Mm. Or the millions. Yeah, of blocks. I'm I'm looking at it. It's oh here here's here's a full render of the entire thing. I mean, it's not the entire thing. That full. Or map. at least an absurdly large size of it. Yeah. Well, no, that's like maybe uh, a uh, a fifth of it. Mm. Did they ever reach bedrock? Uh, you. Of, of course they did. Yeah, the entire spawn is mostly bedrock. They've used glitches to get rid of bedrock. They've actually exploited the uh, anti-void uh, glitch to basically glitch out chunk, delete it entirely, and then build stuff on the flat bedrock. Wild. Uh. Yeah, no, 2B2T is so wild. It's one of my favorite Minecraft ser I've never actually played on it because, you know, the queue is terrible and also it's not really welcoming to new newcomers. Yeah. You have to escape spawn. But it's an anarchy uh, ser it's an anarchy server, so oh, makes shit. sense. Anarchy has its own uh, benefits. Yeah, pretty much the only rule is don't dupe and don't make lag machines. And also uh don't um, you like uh, there's no naturally spawning in portals uh, the only the only official end portal was put in by uh, uh, the <laughs> by the uh, server owner makes sense and uh, there but that doesn't mean that's the only one there was one of the most infamous griefers, uh, Pop Bob, had made multiple, uh, uh, had many personal, uh, uh, end portals. And. Damn it. Uh, one of Pop Bob's secret end portals was actually found like within this year, like uh, maybe like four months ago, maybe. Um, actually, it was probably closer to six. But uh, one of Pop Bob's uh, uh, illegal end portals was recently found, and it threw the entire server into a tizzy because one of the uh, the person who found it noticed that one of the cor one of the uh, corner. Uh, portal pieces didn't have an eye on it uh, and even though the, uh, the portal was complete putting the eye in it caused the portal sound to play across the entire server huh yeah so like everyone heard that everyone knew that there was an illegal uh, portal somewhere and nobody Oof. knew where it turns out it's because it was one of uh, Pop Bob's secret bases. And Pop Bob hadn't been on in like over half a decade. Mm. That's wild. Oh, yeah. There's so much wild. Like, look up the incursions. Some of the most wild shit is uh, like. People build bases and then duplicate bases. Uh, like they'll build a uh, base and then build an exact replica elsewhere that's a little easier to find. Mm. Uh, so just throw people off? Yeah, yeah. So that they, if uh, somebody takes like a screenshot of the base under its construction, uh, it'll, they'll, um, They'll make the oh shit. They'll make the fake bases uh, coordinates be leaked. Mm. Uh, that's what happened with uh, uh, Sky Valkyrie. So as a heads up, we are two hours into our stream right now. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm gonna beat Conestead. Uh, if it gets to be, if it gets to be 9:30 my time, and we still haven't beaten Conestead, okay. Then I will end the stream. 
but I so one more hour. Yes, one more hour, but I don't okay. think it'll take that long. Uh, I don't think fair it'll enough because I've I've been getting the uh, pattern down. Okay. We did beat the boss in record time. Don't get greedy. Don't get greedy. Don't. Oh. <sighs> okay. Crowd control. Woo! Oh. <sighs> I need it. There we go. Okay. Uh, daggers. He's getting reckless. Yes! Woo! We oh. did it! Oh, well, right, on, right on this. Thank you, Reaper. My time in this world is over. And then he fades away. Oh, I like that, his uh, hat! Oh, uh, it's a tombstone, and it's become his tombstone. That's cool. Oh, what cool. is that? His tombstone always was going to be his grave. Oh, I knew I knew it was... Oh, hey, ancient... Ta hey, that's the thing. Oh, it's an eye. It's an eyeball. See, see if you can pick up his shovel. It's an eyeball. I am well, absolutely eye going to try. Eyeball. You feel the eye gazing into your soul. Can I? Oh, no. That would have been so cool, though. Oh, I, I guess wish... no extra weapons. Okay, the I'm, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, look up the final weapon. Weapons. Death's door. Oh, so much for that time limit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 okay. I, uh, go for another 20 minutes, then. <laughs> and, Reaper's uh, Greatsword. The Reaper's Greatsword? Ooh. To find and unlock the Reaper's great sword. Okay, let me scroll down. It's a great sword, you know. Yeah, it sounds great. It's the greatest. Uh, I'm gonna miss Homestead. Oh no, yeah, right. that is Homestead. A Reaper's great sword. Yes. All right, how to find the Reaper's Great Sword? To find and unlock the Reaper's Great Sword, you have to have obtained both the hook shot and bomb spells. Once you've unlocked both the spells, make your way to the stranded sailor door and head north over the nearby bridge. Okay, so stranded sailor and head north. Yep, over the uh, bridge. Okay. All aboard. Oh <laughs> man, God, Stedhone is such a good boss. The bosses in this game are really good. Like, they were all fantastic. Uh, <coughs> three crows. Stranded Sailor. Uh, this game is beautiful. It's. Oh, I'm amazing. The game is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, you said north? Yep. North. Alright. Oh. Go straight, but it might be difficult for us. From there, look for the wooden staircase, staircase that's n to your north of your position, and throw a bomb at the wall beneath it. Oh, b bomb at the wall beneath it? The beneath the staircase, yes. Okay. The wooden staircase. Yeah, I think it's one... right there. In yes. that wall. Oh, shit. What is that? Ooh. Oh. It's a thing. There's... Press the glowing button and read the plaque on the next clue. Climb the wooden staircase and follow the path to the top until no, you no, get to I, a crossing. Uh, twin columns, a secret waits. Okay, so twin columns. I think a I'm... secret waits for the E. Okay, so you said up the staircase. Yes. Climb the wooden staircase and follow the path to the top until you come to the crossing. Oh, I see the great sword. I see it right there. You see it yeah, on the it left? Is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I think I I can figure out how to get there. Okay, no. Uptown, funk it up. Uh, Uptown, sure funk it up. Go the long way around. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right. Look at all those pumpkins. Certainly Halloween time. Spooky, oh, scary, probably scary over looking. here. No? It's a long way around. Actually, uh... I, I, I'm, I'm seeing something. Two columns? Oh, wait. Yeah, the two columns here. Go in. Now time to go through Let's see. another area. Another uh, there's the weakness of the walls. Uh, the giant face. The giant face. Where are giant face? Where giant face stairs? A secret waits for thee. That's down here, right? Or over here? Over this way? It depends if it's giving you the look. 
Have I been over here? Yes, I have been over here. That's Actually, a gargoyle. Yeah, there's probably something over here about this gargoyle. We exist to serve those who oppose the Lord of Doors. That's probably the last one. I wonder if the gargoyle was the giant face. I don't know. It didn't seem to give you much. Well, I, there was a button that I clicked. Oh, yeah. Let's see if... Uh, uh, you, you missed one, apparently. Probably you the face. It. <laughs> the face it wasn't the face you thought it was. Yeah. Return to the crossroads, take the set of stairs leading north, and throw a bomb at the wall opposite the large statue head. Uh, the crossroads? Yes. Um, okay, that's probably over this way. But I'm yeah. glad that I figured out that the, there was probably one at the gargoyle. Oh, this yeah. is this is the... Uh, yeah, so take, a, take a left. Go, go left. down to the, uh, yeah, the, the oh, one left. up. Down no, 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 up, 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 up. Up, 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 There we go. Yeah, okay. That giant-ass face. And yeah. This is gonna say the gargoyle, probably. Uh, beneath the gargoyle statue. Yep. I'm yeah, glad I I, I I am actually really proud that I was able to extrapolate the gargoyle. So now that yeah. all four are got, um, you need to go back to the gargoyle, don't you? What? No. Climb back I... down the mountain and follow the path that leads south of the wooden stairs. That should take you to the docks. Okay. So yeah. Uh. And I'm guessing that raises a grappling hook uh, position then. I think the grappling hook position was there. I think what was, what was in your way was a uh, was the locks. All right. Maybe. Oh, yes. So it's was... good that you went back for that. Weakness the walls can't see beneath. Oh, that's where the start is. Yep. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, this Got one this. was owned by a Lord of Doors. Yep. It's by his statue. Found a great sword. Uh, clearly wielded by an imposing figure. Let's see what it's like. Oh, my God. It's so massive. Uh, let's see. Standard uh -huh. is 1.25. It gets two swings. Right. Uh, Reaper's great sword. It has uh, it has more better. damage than the thunder hammer. It's uh, got fewer. S it's about the same swings. It's just the superior. Uh, it's the superior thunder hammer. Wow. Yeah. Well, does it have uh, uh... an effect? Oh. Oh well. Doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, in the stream because uh, we beat in the world. Us. Uh, we we beat the final boss. We beat the bonus boss. This game is fantastic. I absolutely recommend it. I had a lot of fun with it. It is very difficult, but not unfairly difficult. And that is honestly the mark of a really good game, where at the really hard parts, you're able to pinpoint exactly why it is that you uh, failed and work on doing better. It's it is, funical. Yeah, it, it's really good. And I I say definitely buy this. Um, it, it's loads of fun. Um, next week, I am going to be playing Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. As I said, I'm not going to play uh, uh, Pathologic because... Um, you well, don't want to go from Sphinx right to yeah. Um, it, it would be I if I'd play if I did Pathologic I'd play one uh, episode of Pathologic then one episode of Sphinx and then move right to Arkham. So I'm gonna do two episodes of Sphinx and then uh, Arkham until uh, until October ends, and then I'll switch back to Sphinx. Uh, Arkham is go Arkham Asylum is going to be my October 